In this installment, we're going to be going over the MLB bet slate for Friday, August 2nd. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for our Friday, August 2nd MLB bet slate we got going on. But before we deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon. Uh, right now, we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel, currently at 7.46 thousand subscribers. This is the road to 10K, and we are well on our way because you guys are showing up each and every single day. So if you already subscribe, continue to like and comment. That helps the YouTube algorithm so we can grow to a broader audience all right and if you want to sign up for that patreon that link is provided down below as well you get access to daily bets uh you get access to fruit futures and to the community track that's going off 24 7 and also down below in that description uh section will be more free bets thanks to betstamp i'm so excited to announce i have partnered with betstamp and sign up experts to provide you guys with an easier way to sign up with any sportsbook in your area if you go to the link in the description down below you will be directed to this page you see here it automatically displays all available sports books in your area plus their current promotions for example you can take the plays given in this video and apply it to any other sports books you don't currently have and reap the rewards now let's get into the slate. First game we have in Wrigley Field, the Chicago Cubs here, uh, 53 and 58, going against the St. Louis Cardinals, 56 and 53. Looking at the current odds right now, it is pretty even between the Cubs and the Cardinals, minus 110 on both sides. Uh, no data yet on the total runs, but with these two pitchers on the mound between uh, Eric Fetty, uh, newly acquired Eric Fetty, and uh, Javier Assad, this total should be around seven to seven and a half range, probably that seven and a half range, depending on what the wind is doing. OK, if the wind is blowing out, it's going to be a little bit higher. Uh, it's going to creep up to that nine range. If it's not, if it's blowing inwards or sideways, it's going to stay around seven and a half between these two guys for the public bet percentage here. Sixty five percent of the bets uh, coming in on the Cubs. But the Sharps are on uh, the money percentage side here on the Cardinals. 55% of the money coming in on the Cardinals. That's the Sharps, okay? Uh, no information on the total runs. Obviously, it is still a little bit too early. That's going to adjust, okay? Uh, for the pitching matchup, uh, Eric Fetty here, newly acquired from the Chicago White Sox. They just traded for him. 7-4 with a 3.11 ERA. Going to be against Javier Assad, 5-3 with a 3.23 ERA. Now, for Eric Fetty here, he was one of the uh, second best uh, Chicago uh, White Sox pitchers here. Obviously, they got their young guy, their young stud that they have over there. But he had extreme home road splits. He was absolutely elite at home with a 1.84 home ERA, and he struggled on the road. But it's going to be a little bit different to see here since he's been newly acquired to the St. Louis team. There's no home road sp uh, split here. Uh, Cubs is usually... Uh, a spacious outfield, especially if that wind is blowing in. This is a perfect uh, pitching uh, environment here for him, especially if that wind is blowing in. So I, I don't, I don't see it would it would affect him here in his first start. This is him being in a motivated situation here, getting out of a poor team in the White Sox and coming over to the St. Louis Cardinals. I expect Fetty to pitch more like his home self than his road self. All right. So I'm um, looking at. His numbers all together, he dominated uh, righties uh, fairly well. The issue was against lefties um, in total with a 1.30 home run per nine uh, was his only blemish. He's going to probably see four to five uh, lefties here. So he does give up a little bit of power, okay, to lefties. Now, Javier Saad uh, pitches very well at home here with a 2.20 ERA. Despite that, he has a major walk problem against righties. Uh, his uh, walk rate was at 17%. That is, anything above 10 is drastic. 
All right, that means you're giving teams opportunities to get men on base. That does not bode well. Um, and against righties, he had a, a 1.57 whip and the exit was 6.37 as well. So cause a concern here with Javier Assad, even at home. So in this spot here, I'm going to be going with the Cardinals on the money line for the total. If they, Once it comes out, I'm going to be taking the under on the total between these two guys. I don't think things get wild and crazy here, but I do think that the Cardinals can get to Javier side with their right-handed bats. In PSC Park here, Pittsburgh Pirates 55 and 53. Going up against the Arizona Diamondbacks 58 and 51. Looking at the current odds right here, we have road favorites, Diamondbacks minus 135 on that money line with the comeback of the Pirates at a plus 110. Total run set at eight and a half. For the public bet percentage here, heavy on the side of Arizona, 84% of the bets, 96% of the money on the D-backs here. To uh, total runs here, 94% of the bets, 95% of the money towards the over eight and a half all right very interesting to see here we have two strong pitchers here in brandon path five and six with 3.92 era and lewis ortiz five and two with a 2.75 era okay now for brandon path he does have a little bit of a worse uh era on the road 4.29 era none none too crazy but uh just some cause of concern here despite the fact um, he is very good against righties, and that's the, the benefit here. The majority of this Pirates lineup will be righty, okay? Low whip, low average to righties. His issue is against, slightly, his issue is against lefties. A 1.16 home run per nine against lefties, a 283 batting average, and a 1.48 whip. The benefit here is he's only going to see three lefties. So, really depending on that lineup, most likely, he's only going to see three lefties, and that's going to be a benefit to him. Uh, Luis L. Ortiz here, he's been solid so far this year. Five and two, great ERA. The ERA is the same on, on the road and at home at 2.7, okay? Uh, but nothing really blows uh, me away with looking at his numbers. A 17% K rate to righties, 20% K rate to lefties. He relies on ground balls and fly outs. Nothing, nothing too crazy here. And he just faced his team. Literally, he just faced the Diamondbacks. Five innings pitched, three earned runs, one home run, three walks, and four Ks. Okay. Uh, so this is the second time around seeing the same guy that doesn't have really dominant stuff. And that's why uh, I can lean towards the Diamondbacks in this spot here. Brandon Path, I see as the be better pitcher. He's not going to see many uh, lefties in this lineup. I like the Diamondbacks on the money line, and I like the over eight and a half runs. I think the Diamondbacks can get to Ortiz in this specific start here. In Yankee Stadium here, we have the New York Yankees, 65 and 45. When we get to Toronto Blue Jays here, 50 and 59. We have the AL East battle on our hands here. Yankees home favorites, minus 165 with the comeback of the Blue Jays at a plus 135. Total runs set at nine. All right, for that public bet percentage, we have 95% of the bets, 94% of the money on the Yankees. Total runs, 94% of the bets, 95% of the money towards the total over nine runs. All right, interesting matchup here. Starting pitching, uh, Kevin Gossman, 9-8 with a 4.44 ERA. Going up against uh, Marcus Stroman here, 7-5 with a 3.64 ERA. Now, Gossman does pitch much better. Um, much better on the road. He has huge home road splits, a 2.34 road ERA compared to a 6.39 home ERA. Um, he has a low whip and average to both lefties and righties here. His blemish on the road usually is to righty power, 1.59 home run per nine. But the Yankees have absolutely dominated Kevin Gossman this year, and some, and he faced him three times already. So in the starts with against the Yankees, all right, we had this one on uh, the 30th of June, four innings pitch, seven earned runs, one home run, five walks, and seven Ks. That was a poor performance there. If we go into April. 
Um, he gave up. This was another losing effort. Five innings pitched, one earned run, three walks, and six Ks. So you see a, a high number of walks here. He is striking them out decently. And then uh, earlier in that in that month of April, this was an absolute uh, bombshell here. And this was on the road in the Yankee Stadium here. Similar situation. One and one third innings pitched. Uh, five earned runs, two home runs, two walks, and no strikeouts. So it doesn't matter here. They have been able to get to Kevin Gossman here. Um, for Marcus Stroman on the other side here, he is worse at home with a 4.87 ERA. He pitches much better on the road. Um, so if we're looking at him, his issues are his home run numbers here versus lefties, a 2.10 home run per nine, a 1.44 whip, and the exit is at 5.09. He's given up a 13% walk rate. So opportunities here for um, those left-handed bats in the Toronto Blue Jays to get on base. And versus righties, he has a home run problem at a 2.64. So home runs galore here, either lefties and righty in, in Yankee Stadium here. Um, if we're going to a scenario that was similar uh, to this situation here earlier in the season in April, um, this was in Yankee Stadium. It was six innings pitched, no earned runs, no home runs, one walk and six Ks. So far this year, he has had no, not much of a big problem here going up against the Toronto Blue Jays. Earlier in June, four innings pitch, only three earned runs, three walks, and three Ks. That was a winning effort there. Um, so I'm going to be leaning here to the side of the New York Yankees. I think that the Yankees can get the gospel. They've been doing that each and every time in three starts already. Stroman. Looking at the numbers, this could be a situation where he could give up some runs, especially in that home run department. He's given up above two home run per nine to lefties and righties. So give me the Yankees on the money line. But definitely, definitely, I love the over nine runs in here. We see opportunities here for Gossman and we see have opportunities here with Stroman. Both of these offense can get to either pitcher. So Yankees money line and over nine runs. In progressive fields here, Cleveland Guardians. Uh, they are currently 66 and 42, going to be against the Baltimore Orioles, 65 and 45. Looking at the current odds here, Baltimore Orioles road favorites minus 125 on that money line, with the comeback of the Guardians at a plus 105. Total runs set at nine. For that public bet percentage, 47% of, excuse me, 53% of percent of the bets coming in on the Orioles, 66% of the money coming in on the side of the Cleveland Guardians here. That's the sharp money coming in heavily on the side of the home dog. Total runs here, 93% of the bets and 93% of the money towards the over nine runs. Now with this pitching matchup here, I'm going, with, I'm going to go with ESPN. Yahoo has a different picture here, but ESPN usually is trustworthy. Carlos Carrasco is going up against Dean Kramer. Uh, Dean Kramer, 4 and 7 with a 4.20 ERA, a 1.23 whip. Carlos Carrasco, 3 and 9 with a 5.68 ERA and a 1.40 weight um, whip. Now, Kramer, Kramer has been better on the road with a 3.05 ERA. He's had some struggles at home, but this is a spot in a situation where he's going to be in a little bit of a benefit here on the road. He's given up a very low whip and average to both lefties and righties. His issue here is going to be lefty power for from the Cleveland Guardians here, and they can go heavily on, on the left-handed bats. Uh, so left-handed uh, home run per nine is at a 1.42 that he's given up. Now, Carlos Carrasco, um, he's been bad all year long. He has been pitching a little bit better uh, right before the All-Star break and a little bit after the All-Star break. But his numbers in total here, road and home, is above a 5 ERA, all right? Last time he did face the Baltimore Orioles, it was five innings pitched, only two on runs, one home run, two walks, and three strikeouts. Looking at the full BVP, he... Uh, the Orioles have struggled against Carlos Carrasco. Uh, maybe that's because the majority of this, this Oriole lineup is going to be lefty. He's probably only going to see a handful of righties here because that's where his issue is. A uh, home run per nine against righties at a 2.42. So he's given a major power to right-handed bats. 
but the Orioles are going to probably throw out one to two right batters. Okay. So that's going to be the, the question mark here. What kind of lineup that they come out with to counteract Carlos Carrasco and take advantage of his poor pitching that we've seen for the majority of this, of this year. It's a guy that's given up a big, big home run number uh, um, in this spot. So what I'm going to be leaning towards here in this one, um, Kramer, better on the road, low whip, low average. Give me the Orioles on the money line in this one. If I had to consider over and under, I would go with the over eight and a half runs. Um, just looking at the home run numbers on both sides, Carlos Carrasco is a guy that can get lit up quick and fast in a hurry in the Orioles type of offense here, especially with the acquisition of Eli Jimenez here, can get to him. So give me the... Baltimore Orioles on the money line in the over eight and a half run. In a Globe Life Park here, we have the Texas Rangers 52 and 57. Going against the Boston Red Sox 57 and 50. We have the Red Sox as road favorites. Minus 120 on the money line with the comeback of the Rangers at a plus 100. Total run set at eight and a half. For that public bet percentage, 88% of the money, 88% uh, uh, of the bets, 100% of the money on the Boston Red Sox. Total runs at 92% of the bets. 95% of the money here on the over eight and a half runs. All right. Now for this pitching matchup here, Cutter Crawford has been absolutely phenomenal this season. Bright spots against the Yankees. Um, and we have some really good performances coming out of Crawford as of late. Um, six and eight so far, 3.60 ERA. Jose Arena, three and five with a 3.07 ERA. Crawford, his strong suit has been on the road with a 3.07 ERA, a low whip and average to both lefties and righties. He's given up uh, a power issue on the road, okay? Versus lefties, a 2.30 home run per nine, and against righties, a 1.32 home run per nine. Uh, and there's a ton of power here in this Texas Rangers lineup. Jose Urino on the other side has been absolutely elite. It doesn't matter if he's been, uh, been a starter, which he was at the beginning of the year, um, while Max Scherzer was out and also in long relief when Max Scherzer came back. He's been good no matter what. And his home ERA is at a 1.17. So great numbers across the board here. Lefties and righties, low average, low whip. Um, and you got his strong suit here at home where he really is dominant. I'm going to be going with the underdog here. Home dog in the Rangers. Give me them. Plus 100 on that money line. And for this game, I'm going to go under the total here. Under eight and a half. I think Urena does fine. Cutter Crawford is a good pitcher, especially on the road. He might give up a home run here or there. So I like the under eight and a half and Rangers money line. In Angel Stadium here, we have the LA Angels 47 and 61 going against the New York Mets 57 and 51. Mets are road favorites, minus 145 on that money line with the comeback of the Angels at a plus 120. Total run set at nine. All right. For the public bet percentage here, 85% of the bets, 82% of the money on the side of the New York Mets. Total runs, 88% of the bets, 84% 84 of the money towards the over nine runs. Paul Blackburn, 4 and 2 with a 4.41 ERA. Tyler Anderson, 8 and 9 with a 2.96 ERA. We have a lefty versus righty matchup here. And the Mets are top five in the league against opposing lefties. Uh, Tyler Anderson has been pretty solid this year, all right? He's been impeccable this season, better on the road than he has been at home. But at home, his ERA is at a 3.88, okay? So a little bit, little bit more struggles here on the road for Tyler Anderson. You got to factor that in, plus with the fact that the Mets are very good against lefties. Um, so we're going to be seeing a situation here where Tyler Anderson will get tested with this lineup of the New York Mets who are red hot right now. Paul Blackburn on the other side just faced this Angels team. He was newly acquired here uh, during the trade deadline um, from, the, from the Oakland A's to the New York Mets here. And in that game, it was five innings pitched, four earned runs, and two home runs. This is a guy. This is a righty here. They can't pitch to opposing righties. I usually avoid those guys, okay? Right now, looking at his number against opposing righties, a 2.08 home run per nine, a 281 batting average, a 1.57 whip, 
a XFIP at 5.10. He's going to see at least six righties in this lineup from the Angels. All right, so this spot here, definitely viable for the home dog Angels. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely liking the total on the over. I expect the Mets to hit Tyler Anderson because he's a lefty. And I expect the Angels to get the Blackburn because they already faced him and he can't pitch the righties. So top play here. Um, it's going to be over nine runs. If I had to choose a winner, I would slightly lean towards the Angels and the plus money at home, plus one and, one and a half, right? At a very good number at a minus 150. Last but not least here, we have the Seattle Mariners um, and T-Mobile Park here, 57 and 53. Going against Philadelphia Phillies, 65 and 43. Uh, looking at the current odds here, Mariners are slight home favorites, minus 115 with the comeback of the Phillies at a minus 105. Here, a total run set at eight for the public bet percentage. 83% of the bets, 87% of the money, all over the Philadelphia Phillies here, coming off that poor performance against the New York Yankees. Total runs here, 94% of the bets, 93% of the money on the over eight runs. For this matchup here, Tyler Phillips, 3-0 with a 1.80 ERA, going against Brian Wu, 4-1 with a 2.35 ERA. Both of these young pitchers here have been outstanding. All right, Tyler Phillips is a new to the game, a little bit newer to the game here, but Brian Wu uh, pitched with the Mariners last year, was phenomenal, and is keeping that run going. He's been elite at home with a 1.27 ERA. His weakness is against the lefties. His raised numbers is against lefties across the board. He's going to see four very good to solid lefties here in this lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies. Phillips on the, uh, on the other side here. Small sample size since he just came up and pitching for the Phillies here. Has been really good. His issue is going to be righty power. He's given up three home runs so far um, in his short uh, MLB career. But if we're looking at the numbers uh, here, look at Tyler Phillips. He did a complete game against the Guardians offense. The Guardians. Nine innings pitched, four hits, one walk, four Ks. Another phenomenal performance against Pittsburgh. Another solid performance against Atlanta. Four innings pitched, only one earned run, seven strikeouts in that one. He's been super, super impressive here. I think this is going to be a pitching duel. Um, and I'm going to have to lean with the Philadelphia Phillies. Like I said, coming off that embarrassing performance of the Yankees, this is a must-win spot here. And they got a young gun in Tyler Phillips that I'm impressed with. Phillies on the money line under on the total of eight runs. I think this, uh, these two guys definitely put on performance between Brian Wu and Phillips as well. So those are going to be our selections for the Friday slate. Let me know in that comment section down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are going to be your plays uh, for Friday? Let me know down below. If you guys want to sign up for that Patreon, that link is provided down below as well. You get access to free bets. Um, the future bets and the community chat as well and also if you go down in that description bet stamp is providing more free mlb bets other than mines go down below and click that link as well for that article all right i'll be back very soon with another video all right peace out